Well, what an honor to be here. Um, this is, I don't know, I think I've been to every unconfiscatable that there's been. And Ugly Old Goat has changed his image over the years. And I want to thank uh, uh, Hollywood makeup artists who helped me with this latest mask. I can actually <laughs> blink my eyes a little bit. All right. The mouth doesn't move, but maybe next year it will. <laughs> But I'm going to keep it real simple. You know, I had the honor of hearing uh, Greg Foss. I've never met Greg Foss before. You know, that's the best thing about Bitcoin. You're meeting new people all the time. And he said, you know what? We need to go down to 11th grade level. Well, I'm an ugly old goat, and I keep it real simple. So we're going down to preschool and kindergarten level. Because that's the only way, that's the best way of teaching. And you know, Bitcoiners tend to come from the top down. And we need to work from the bottom up. And to get the people that are there, you know, working every day in the fields or washing cars or whatever they're doing involved in Bitcoin. And that can happen. And they make it more and more difficult for us to work from the top. I had a big thing I wanted to be at our, our Bitcoin this year. Going to arbitrate between different countries. Well, you know what? They're making it so difficult with all these KYCs and AML, I've decided I'm going to go the other way. What I teach is real simple. It's HODL, save, build a sound money. HODL, <laughs> save, build a sound money. There's nothing hard about it, but it's hard. Saving Bitcoin, hauling Bitcoin, is rough. By the same token, hey, can anybody have too, uh, too big a hodl? Who, who here can have too big a hodl? Oh, yeah, believe it or not, I teach you can. If you have Bitcoin and you haven't taken care of your family, your hodl is too big. Okay? And that's why we save. When you sell your hodl, you don't want to sell because you have to. It's because something else comes along that's better. Well, nothing's come along better than to me than the goat lady. So anything that, I, that she wants, she kind of gets, if I can afford it. And I say, well, that's stupid. Let's do Bitcoin instead. But you know what? A lot of times in the end, it's worked out. And she's comfortable with different things than I am. We're all different people. So you want to not just hodl, but you need to save. And by saving, I mean you need to reward yourself and reward your family. And the last thing we do is we build it. You don't have to build on Bitcoin. Now, I know there's a lot of guys, so sort of smart people. I don't understand the Bitcoin, back end of Bitcoin at all. But you know what? You don't have to, to have Bitcoin work for you. That's not important at all. What is important, you just, whatever you do, be the very best at it. And you know what? True hodlers tend to do that. So my message is really simple, and that is build a hodl, excuse me, hodl, save, build a. Bitcoin sound money, sound money. So I'm going to introduce my wife. This is the Bitcoin lady. She's having lots of fun right now. So I wanted to introduce her first before I get the rest of the panel. What are you doing to have fun in Ensenada right now? Well, we use open a little car wash, but when we use a little car wash, we have another plans too. Okay. Well, we're going to be issuing some Bitcoin coupons when everybody gets a car wash. They'll get some, I call them a standard, but basically a standard is a decimalized Satoshi. A hundred Satoshis is a Bitcoin standard. And we're going to be issuing little coupons so they can come and redeem them again for another wash. Whatever else we happen to develop down there. I have a feeling a lot of people at Ensenada are going to want to hold those uh, little coupons that we pass out. We'll find out, won't we? But you know what? If we're going to be big. Be, if we're going to be our own banks and we have to act like it, we have to relearn banking because we've forgotten about it. And money creation 
is fine as long as you're creating new wealth. That's what sound commercial banking is. Hayek taught us that we had to have not just free market money, but also free market banking. We don't know what it is, and I don't claim to know, but we can study history and see what happened in the past. And that's the challenge we have ahead. So let me end with that and uh, introduce the panel. I think the first one we have is the Bitcoin crypto couple, right? All right. I, all these guys are new people that I've never met. That's what makes Bitcoin so fun. And then our second panelist is uh, Nico. Hmm? B BTC Randolph. All right, and we have Nico. Oh, Corniferous. <laughs> so you can, you can be in Bitcoin and be fun. All right, so we can be in Bitcoin and have fun. And I'm, uh, I'm just pass it off to you guys and let you tell your stories. Cool. <laughs> Hi, are you guys sitting? Are you coming off stage, stage or are you staying, staying on? on? Coming on? No. Tell me what's going on. Are you staying? Are you staying on stage, ugly, or are you no, coming off? Exactly. You want to stay up here? Yeah. Can we get one more chair? We should have another one of those somewhere. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So, ugly. Um, let's walk you over. Oh, oh no, 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 no. You know what? Right behind you. You can just sit behind you. Oh. Okay. Well, careful. Oh, our Hollywood chair at that. Nice. All right. Uh, how are we doing on mics? Oh, there we go. We got a proper chair. Boom. All right. Someone's going to have to put a mic to, to Ugly when he wants to speak. So there you go. Anybody else needs a beer? Yeah, we do. Good? All right. Thank you very much. All right, I, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, right? You saw these amazing speakers throughout the day, and you know you have someone in a Gandalf costume, someone wearing a Greek helmet. Look, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this. We are living through narrative trench warfare every day. You have the establishment trying to set the narrative, and you have individuals, millions upon millions upon individuals all over the world, getting the truth out by communicating with each other. And there's no better way than getting the message out to the mainstream than by making them laugh. And that is what all of us on this panel dedicate our lives to. So that being said, the crypto couple, you guys had an awesome video. They got a ton of engagement and I'm sure the audience would find this valuable. How much more engagement did entertainment get versus just a regular informational video? Uh, well, when it comes to entertainment, we're talking about half a million views versus about 15,000. So you're always going to reach a bigger audience. And I know we're the crypto couple and we're here at the like Bitcoin, not blockchain conference. So crypto is like the dirtiest word ever. Blasphemy. Ah. And it is. It is a dirty word to Bitcoiners, but it is a familiar word to everyone else. And familiarity is important to adoption. That is something we learned very early on. I was just in an elevator where I obviously look obnoxious. This is no secret. And it's a full elevator of no one here at the conference. But a woman goes, oh my god, you look so cute. And I say, thank you. Yes, I'm wearing Bitcoin orange for the Bitcoin conference. And a man in the elevator goes, oh, OK, you're into Bitcoin. So can you tell me why SafeMoon is doing so badly? And I said, well, because it's SafeMoon buy Bitcoin instead. And this is what we've realized. We are the crypto couple because that is how you get people in. It's not the door in the face, it's the foot in the door. Because people are starting in SHIB, they're starting in Doge, they haven't started their rabbit hole journey yet. But you can get them there. But we're not gonna get them there if we just automatically silo ourselves off. So yes, we are the crypto couple. And yes, crypto is a dirty word, but Last thing I would add to this is that we are big fans of Trojan horses. Uh, we talk, like to talk about the fact that Bitcoin is a Trojan horse, right? It's a Trojan horse for freedom. Comedy is a Trojan horse for education. You have the ability to reach people that would otherwise not pay attention to your message. Because you are saying it, 
wearing an obnoxious costume, or doing something absurd. It is also an opportunity to point out the absurdity in the current system in which we live, and to do that by poking fun at it. This is a powerful tool that we all have and that we should use. We can meme them into, well, irrelevance, and we will. And make no mistake before I pass it on to Gandalf, we are winning. The Financial Times released an article, and the name of the article is hilarious. It says, fiat money is not a meme. That's how you know they're winning. And if you go to a tweet by the European Central Bank or you know, any of those institutions, if you go to the comments, if they haven't disabled them, what you'll see is the best Bitcoin memes by the best Bitcoin memers. And here's the thing about memes. They aren't funny if they're not true, right? So again, this is something that happens a little bit in the background, but make no mistake, in this battle for freedom, if tweets are bullets, memes are fucking artillery. Bitcoin Gandalf, you have experience with that. Yeah, um, I'd love to sit here and say that the reason why I'm sitting on stage wearing a Gandalf outfit is uh, like some grand master plan to win a meme war, or that you know I, I had like I had this planned out and thought out. The truth is, uh, I got orange pilled in uh, November 2020, and I was already following some Bitcoiners, and I, I saw a lot of ne uh, uh, Nim accounts saying some really funny stuff, you know, trolling the IMF and trolling the web and stuff. And I was like, I want to do this too, but if I do this under my real name, uh, I might destroy my fiat life before I have a Bitcoin life. So I made Bitcoin Gandalf so that I could, you know, be a bit belligerent. I, I, I kind of I kind of look at my, well, my NIM account started kind of like, uh, it was a way to like, you know, when you go out on a Friday night and you get really drunk and you, uh, you lose all your inhibitions and you do some silly things that, that you regret the next day, that was what my NIM account was for. But then it, it's uh, turned into this. So, yeah, uh, it, was, it was completely unintentional. But it, I, I joined Bitcoin Twitter as like one of the funnest places in the world. I absolutely love it. And I laugh so hard every single day. Giacomo's talk earlier was fucking hilarious. And I think like you deserve to be up here on the making Bitcoin fun again panel because you were you were so good. And code is not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the memes, the the trolling, I don't know how some of the institutions, you know, the, uh, the powers that be, how they still try to go on Twitter and, and, and post stuff because I don't know if it's just because I'm on Bitcoin Twitter, so Twitter serves me what I want to see, but the replies are just like them getting destroyed by, by us. But yeah, I mean, I'm having a great time. I'm very, very, very honored to be with you guys like on stage and, and to be here. It's amazing. I love Bitcoin. I love Bitcoiners. Likewise, dude. So with Bitcoin and with NGU technology doing its thing, you also have, which is in the beginnings right now, but you have the rise or the beginning of Bitcoin culture. And this is very different than mainstream Bitcoin. Giacomo touched upon it a little bit when he did his presentation, which is much better than mine. Um, but Phil, I know you wanted to say a little bit about that, the rise of Bitcoin culture and yes. where it is right now. Yes, absolutely. But before I did that, I just wanted to point out to Matt Hill, because he asked a rhetorical question about who's going who's gonna to run all these nodes. We're going to run these fucking nodes. We're the people that are going to do this. Because if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it. So, but going back to Nico's original question and, and point, um, something that's, you just need, you need humor. And something that I've always found that was missing in every, at least in the majority of things that we do daily, is that there is no humor. Everything's very serious. Everything is very rigid. And when I came to Bitcoin, I was really impressed with the philosophy and I really liked the people that I was seeing, but I was also still seeing this, this seriousness. And who decided that none of this should be fun? Who decided that we shouldn't be laughing? Who decided that we shouldn't be making fun of these ridiculous shit coiners and their narratives that make no sense? It's not gonna be money. It's Chuck E. Cheese tokens. L literally, it's Chuck E. Cheese tokens. So. Why are we even, why are we pretending that this is real? Let's make fun of it and let's make them laugh. So that's exactly what we're doing. 
You know, we're taking these things, we're, at least in the show, we're dismantling during the fail. You know, we go through and we dismantle these ridiculous shitcoin projects, and we go through the memes, which Nico mentioned, and we have great laughs. And I think that this is something that is needed, because throughout history, money has been, not just money, but finance has been prestige. And really, what is prestige? Prestige is this, um, essentially, it's the power to impress or influence people with your wealth or status. So that means you're looking at an illusion. You're being fooled. That's what's happening to us. We're being fooled. And to me, I just don't think that we need this aspect. And Bitcoin offers that truth. We don't need the, the flare. We don't, we don't need all of the lights. We don't need to sit there and, and lie to people and fool them into the value of the actual asset that we're using. It's real and it's backed by proof of work. So. And it's fun. It's fun. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, guys, if you're traders out there, and I know a lot of you are, one of the things I teach, uh, you know, if you're not having fun trading, you're over trading. You don't get it at all. So I, I, I heard some great speeches. Like I said, I haven't been able to attend most of this, and we got in really late, early this morning. But I did listen to, to Greg Foss, and what he was teaching was just uh, great money management. The secret to success uh, is not magic points. Where, I, I don't know where Bitcoin's going. Nobody does, but if you're managing things correctly, if you're watching your equity, you're going to do great. You know, people lose their hollow because of stupidity, not because they think they know, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow. And uh, so, you know, again, my advice, if you're a trader and you're having problems, and most of you trading, if you're on the exchanges now, you're, you're playing against some professional traders and, and you're probably losing. And if you are, uh, you're not having fun. And so most people overtrade, and that's what gets you in trouble. So manage that equity, number one. Don't worry about where the market is going. Uh, you need to have that money management first, and then you can start applying the fundamentals and applying the TA. Those things are all useful, but they're not going to make you rich. Okay, And you may not get rich in Bitcoin, but you are going to preserve what you have. Absolutely. So, look... I'm going to pass this question to Old Goat. I think that Bitcoin, Bitcoin entertainment, Bitcoin culture has come a tremendous, like a very long way. So Old Goat, why don't you talk a little bit about how it was in the past and what you've noticed has changed? Well, it was a very long, I don't know how far back do you want me to go? I, you know, the very, very beginning. Sound money started for me way back in the late 70s, and my mother... And not, not that beginning. Bitcoin oh, beginning. Okay. What beginning? Bitcoin beginning. Bitcoin beginning. Mr. Goat. Bitcoin beginning. Well, the Bitcoin beginning for me it was, you know, I'd kind of heard about it, I'd paid it, but I just completely dismissed it because, you know, I was, I, it's a gold bug, and there's no way that, you know, something was going to work that's completely non-existent or electrical. Um, and uh, then finally, and my son kept prodding me, and it was in August of 2013, and I, when I started getting into it, and there were, it's hard to find the resources, but I was just up a tw at least 24, 48 hours and couldn't get, an, and then I, I saw it. It, it. I didn't get at all. I, cert I thought I could make a better Bitcoin. I thought you should have competing standards, and then, you know, I had a lot of it wrong, but I did understand that the basic concept, and that's where we need to begin with, with people. And so the way you do it, yeah, you do it through, through being funny and being entertaining. And don't take yourself seriously. Just don't take, you know, don't take Bitcoin too seriously. It's a very serious thing, but it's kind of like gallows humor. If we're all going off the edge of uh, the, you know, if we're all going to the end of the world anyway, we may as well have fun doing it. And, uh, uh, you know, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think we've been given a wonderful gift that, you know, it's now, and it's not going to, it's not up to me. It's not up to an ugly old goddess to these, 
you youngsters on the stage here, and you you guys that the generation coming up, uh, you know, I'm one of these guys. Hey, don't hit the boomers because uh, a lot of them don't get it because a lot of us do, and you, you, we need to not have the, any generational differences. You know, truth is truth regardless of age, and uh, Bitcoin is true money. And I argue that gold is too. It's just it has boundaries, and so it should be kept. <laughs> I hope legal tender becomes gold. I hope governments readopt the gold. I'd love to see the gold standard and Bitcoin standard compete. After all, you know, it is uh, what do they call that? It's uh, it can't be damaged. It just gets stronger. I can't remember the name that's been. Uh, resilient? Huh? Not resilient. resilient. Gold lacks true scarcity and is therefore a shit coin. Debate me. Well, uh, but Bic, the, Frank, the Bic, Bitcoin is better than gold. But Thank it's you. Different than gold, and you shouldn't. We shouldn't dismiss either one. Okay. It's just, it's one is a rock. Hmm? <laughs> That's fine. But it's, it's a shiny, it's, soft rock. It's not even a hard rock. It's not even tungsten. What the fuck are we doing with this? Don't, you know what? It's all imputed value, and my values are different from your values. I'm just messing around. Okay, so what it is, is you might be right, but you are also arguing against 7,000 years of history. So I wouldn't... Bitcoin's kicking ass, though. I... Do you want to own a piece of the future or a piece of the past? You tell me. <laughs> I'll take the future, but that's just me. Well, that's well, where my money's I, on. I agree with you. That, do, do I not own Bitcoin? I, somehow... Why is this creating such friction? Why, why shouldn't we have competing standards? Why should we want to bring the legacy system into Bitcoin? Why do you want Bitcoin to be legal tender? Let gold be legal tender. Keep the damn governments out of Bitcoin. Everybody's, you know, we have, and I'm not pointing any fingers, but you need to realize there is something going on now that's, and I call it Bitcoin crony capitalism. We're all fighting, well, we need to get Bitcoin. We, well, if you have my rules, it's going to make things better. Guys, we have a swindle that's been going on for four generations. Number one is the inflation swindle. Okay? Number two is the entitlement sw swindle. And the third one is the regulation swindle. And if you're out there lobbying for Bitcoin, you better real, be real careful because you're probably falling into the trap of the regulation swindle. I'll leave it at that, because everybody does their own thing. But we need to understand what is a free market. And if you believe in a free market, then you're not trying to declare anything legal tender. If the governments want to do it, fine. But I'm not going to lobby for it. I, I think Old Goat brought up a really good point, and that, look, Fiat needs salesmen. So if you look at the fiat financial industry, people are wearing suits. You know, they take themselves very seriously. They wear ties. Bitcoin does the work. There's, you know, Bitcoin takes the element of trust out of the equation. So you could wear a hoodie. You could wear a goat head. And it doesn't matter. The, 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 found, the foundational layer, you know you could trust it, right? So anyways, I want to pass this next question back to the crypto couple. Shitcoiners, unfortunately, they have very good marketing. And a lot of their shitcoin projects, the reason that they pump, even though fundamentally they're dog shit, people really buy the pizzazz. And I think that as Bitcoiners, or as Bitcoin has been lacking in this place, and I think that not only us on stage, right? The more people are getting out the message, the better. So anyways, guys, why don't you add to that? You're definitely right about having, I mean, they literally have marketing teams, hired marketing teams, projects, roadmaps. I mean, it's, it's exhausting. But Bitcoin doesn't need that. That's the beauty of it. That is the beauty of it inherently. But also when it comes to adoption, something that is a little bit of a difficulty because that means we have to take it upon ourselves to get that message out to everyone else that is not already in this, in this industry in a way that'll actually convince them. And why we started doing this through comedy is because we really did want to educate. And we found that it doesn't work at all. We were on TikTok. It would be like 10 views 
to try to do anything educational, and that's sad. But when we started to make things funny, to put things in context, to make things relatable, and ultimately end with a message about Bitcoin, that is when people actually started responding from demographics we never expected to have people responding from. I think there's also a great lesson uh, between both uh, shit coinery and let's just say the traditional fiat system. If we think about the absurdity of international banking cartels or cabals, I'm not sure which term is PC, so I apologize if I said the wrong one. Um, and the comparison between that and this shit coinery, there is absurdity in both systems. Like you cannot be a rational person and look at what the Federal Reserve or the European Central Bank or the Bank of International Settlements or any of these organizations do and think, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. It doesn't. You cannot look at what shitcoiners do and what they promote and think, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. To a rational human, that is absurd. So what is our greatest tool? We can tell them, you guys are fucking idiots. Like, what, what you don't get this? Like, you're obviously peddling a scam. That doesn't work though, because then they just tr dig their heels in even fucking harder and it makes, it makes those you know, shitcoin maxis even stronger in their own minds. So what can we do? We can rip them the fuck apart with comedy because they are so absurd and so easy to make fun of, whether they are at the Federal Reserve or they're pumping sheep. It doesn't matter. They are all fucking charlatans. It is absurd what they are doing. And the best tool that we have against that is by fucking making fun of them. Like this, this is a superpower, guys. And comedy is also one of the best ways to like not get banned, for the most part, for the most part. Satire is a tool to tell the truth, guys. And the best satire is indistinguishable from truth. And it wouldn't be funny if it wasn't true, right? So, and look, let me kind of give a couple examples before I pass it back to Bitcoin Gandalf. Think about how absurd the presentations from the central banks are, right? We know they're just gonna print more money, but they go up in a suit, taking themselves super seriously, and they want you to believe that they're gonna do something else. But all they know how to do is print more money. But how do you get that message to the mainstream? Because let's say, okay, you put on a suit, you go on you know, video, you take yourselves very seriously. You're gonna get a fraction of what you can get if you make a funny ass video, dressing like Christine Lagarde, going on TikTok, faking her wrench. Hello, I'm Christine Lagarde, and I would like to ma manipulate the monetary policy. It's, it's so much more effective. I got that from Max Geyser, by the way. Shout out, Max. So think about how funny that is, right? It gets the message across. It wakes up the NPCs that are asleep, the NPCs that believe that the illusion that the legacy financial system gives this illusion of stability, especially if you live in a country with a strong fiat currency, but that stability is, on, is based on sand. The foundation of that stability is on sand. So, of course, old goat. Uh, yeah, the, the, if you kind of hear what everyone is saying here, Bitcoin can't be attacked. That's why it's so funny. That's what the humor is. And that's what we're looking for. Now, I'm going to get real serious here, guys. Personally, we can be attacked. That's not funny. And that's what we have to be doing here, here in the future, too, is literally watching the other, each other's backs. Because if you're sticking your neck out for Bitcoin, they are coming after you. And we need Take to it. understand that. I mean, they'll try, for sure. But look... Well, that's, I would be a little bit humble because... No, I mean, it, it's not... Look, I, I definitely agree the state has... The state has a monopoly on violence, no doubt. I'm not doubting that. But what I'm trying to say is that because Bitcoin is a grassroots movement, they might take out a couple people, which they have, right? But there's always someone else that's going to take its place. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. On Twitter, especially if you're on Bitcoin Twitter, which I'm assuming a lot of you guys are, a lot of the plebs and a lot of the meme lords, they're getting banned left and right. And, you know, again, they just get banned and they come back and they add a one to their screen name and then they get banned again and they add a two. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. That's the power of this movement. They, they might try to censor speech, which they're doing, right? But 
unless they completely censor the internet, the truth is always going to find its way to the surface. And at that point, I'm going to pass it off to Gandalf. This panel's getting really fucking serious, I think. I, I'm, it's getting a bit serious here. Um, Take us home, man. Well, look, what I was going to say is, I don't think, yeah, we can do some shots. Um, you know, we don't, Bitcoin, it's true. Like, go, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Um, yeah, like, one of the things I, that, like, I would say I'm particularly passionate about is, like, you know that meme that's, like, hold on, mom, somebody's wrong on the internet, and you have to go and argue against them? Like, I'm like that with crypto and Bitcoin and making sure that, like, trying to make people understand the difference between the two, because I think... You're going to say something? Oh, no. oh, I thought you were leaning over, like, oh, yeah. I was just looking at you. Oh, right. Um, um, yeah, that, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm very passionate about making sure that the correct, well, the, the information as I see it is out there. I wouldn't say correct information because then I'm like policing what's right and what's correct and what isn't, and I'm not the judge of that. Um, but I, what I would say, what I see from Bitcoin is, yeah, we don't have a marketing team and we don't have salespeople and we don't have a budget, but I would say that we have the best marketing team in a decentralized fashion. Like, I'm very, very impressed when I see Bitcoiners, like I see people like, you know, Greg comes up here or Mark comes up here, or, you know, these guys, like I'm blown away. And then I watch Vitalik speak or some other shit coiner and I'm like, there's no chance that I would trust these people with my life's wealth or really pretty much anything. Um, so yeah, they might have the fancy jargon and they might be, you know, selling something that's faster than Bitcoin or whatever it is, but they have no substance, right? And, and a lot of the time, they have ver highly perverse incentives. Like most of us who are up here, sure, we might get a little bit richer. We might have, a, you know, our purchasing power of our Bitcoin might go up a bit if we do this the right or that right or whatever. But for everyone else, they're there. They're, they're trying to get rich by selling you vapor. And I think we're selling, we're not, well, we're not even selling, but what we're talking about is about has substance and there's reasoning behind it. And what they're talking about is just hopium and air. So we're gonna win in the end, uh, but we need, we need to give it time for this to seep through uh, to everyone, for, for the actual like facts to play out rather than you know, somebody just holding XRP because in te you know, it's gonna go up tomorrow or whatever. And it's always tomorrow, always tomorrow, it never happens. You mentioned incentives, and we're here, you know, this is about making Bitcoin fun again. And the reason all of us do it here is because it's fun for us. Like, we genuinely enjoy doing this. And I think that is so unique and especially unique to Bitcoin. And I mean, I think that's the most honest part about it is that you don't need to be paid. You don't need to have anything flashy. We are here being absurdists, spending all of our time not making money because we genuinely believe in what we're talking about. We want to help other people understand it. If I may, we mentioned earlier that Bitcoin has no marketing department, but in reality, everybody in this room is part of Bitcoin's marketing department. Everybody who, has, everybody who custodies their own Bitcoin, everybody who interacts with the Bitcoin network in any way, anybody who accepts payments in Bitcoin or gives them in Bitcoin, they are the marketing team for Bitcoin. We are all the marketing team for Bitcoin. Again, it doesn't need it because Bitcoin's math, right? Bitcoin makes sense once you do the work and understand it. But for some people, they don't understand it yet. They're not there yet. Let's get our foot in the door and let's address those people. Because we can try to orange pill everybody in this room, but like spoiler alert, we're all already orange pilled. That doesn't get us anywhere. Our goal should be to drive adoption to see how we can get Bitcoin into more people's wallets, literally and metaphorically. That should be our goal. How can we reach those people who aren't already bought into this, but who still need a little bit of a push? And let's do it by making fucking fun of all the absurdity and how absolutely ridiculous everything else is when you hold Bitcoin up as a mirror. Bitcoin is a litmus test. It is a mirror. It shows you the absurdity in everything else that you look at. Use that. Yeah, I, I just, Walker, you just made me think of this, and I think... Bitcoin doesn't need marketing. Marketing needs Bitcoin. Absolutely. I'm going to take a line from Guy Swan, and he tweeted this out. Shitcoiners 
would not care stabbing Bitcoin in the back if it means getting their Lambos. I think it's very important to at least provide a counter narrative to that bullshit. And I'm going to pass it on to Phil because that's a specialty. So two, two points. Uh, something that I noticed in Bitcoin um, and something that, I, that we noticed throughout history and revolutions, right? When does a revolution become successful? When it has the hearts and minds of people. And that's something that Bitcoin has that fiat money has never had. Because fiat money robs even the people at the top. It may rob them a little less, but it's still robbing them. The, uh, the second point I wanted to make to go back to the, the comedy aspect had to, do with, um, had to do with Eskimos. I know it kind of sounds irrelevant, but uh, you know, Eskimos, there, there was a story that I heard that uh, essentially if um, in an Eskimo village, if somebody stole something, everybody in the village would get around the person that did the crime or whatever, and they'd all start pointing and laughing at them and ridiculing them. And that alone would stop them from doing this type of behavior. So I, I think that this goes back to our point of making Bitcoin fun and making this entertaining because if we're not gonna call out the stupidity and we're not gonna call out the absurdity, they're gonna take themselves serious and they may end up selling some dog shit to somebody that you love and care about and these people are gonna end up wrecked bag holders, okay? That, that's really not fair to anyone. So to me, I, I think that we really have no other choice than to essentially fight fire with fire. You know, if they're going to sit there and bring, you know, if they're going to sit there and bring out all of these ridiculous shenanigans to try to force, uh, not force, but coerce people into buying their garbage, well, then we're going to call them out on it. We're going to make fun of it, and we're not going to stop. And if they block us, we're just going to, like Nico said, we're going to make another account, and it's going to be Coin Icarus 2 and Nico 2, and we'll just keep going. That's a wonderful ideal, but it's always gone on, guys. There's a chance of always, and we're not, I, I think it's impractical to think we're going to wake up some people, but not most people. That's what's going to happen. And so I, I think it's a wonderful ideal to do that, but the practical thing is people have always got scammed. They're going to continue to because most, you, that's just the way it is. And so it, it is, Bitcoin is not for everyone. I've seen it time and again, how many people I try and teach them and they throw it away. I can't waste my time on that. I'm sorry, I can't. I've done it too many times. So yes, I, I know what you're saying, your heart goes out to it, but you know what? As free people, we are also responsible for what we do. It's not, not my job to take care of you. Sorry. My job is to teach you, and so you can make the decision yourself. And you do that by having fun, because nobody wants to listen to a professor that's dragging his ass and boring. So you make it exciting. Make it fun. But don't, you know, you don't need to take it to the point. Look. I love ad hominem attacks because they're, they're legitimate. But a lot of people, oh, it's ad hominem, it's not fair. No, ad hominem attacks are logically valid so long as they're, number one, true. Number two, if they're relevant. Okay? What happens on Twitter, a lot of things, we're not making true and relevant statements. And that's what I think we have to focus on. Yes, have the humor, but make sure it's true and make sure it's relevant. I completely agree, and this is a great opportunity. If you want to know how to make the best possible content that picks at the absurdity of our current system, just read the fucking Federal Reserve meeting minutes or read what the Bank of International Settlements says in their speeches. Read it word for word, and you will find so many absurd things. There was a, a, a Bank of International Settlements uh, speech, I think it was late January, and they were talking about how central banks of the world are so uniquely positioned to deliver trusted services in this world and that the core tenant of money is trust. Now, we in this room, we look at that and we say, you're literally describing the entire problem. Like, like you just described our problem with you. But they don't see that. They can't see that because what are they? They are fish and money is water that they swim in. You ask them what the water is, they say, I don't know, we're swimming around in it. Like, they don't fucking understand what water is. They don't understand what money is because they are fish swimming in it. They think that they are the salvation, that they are the, the, the cure. They are the problem. And we can use their own words against them. 
because it is like you can't make it up. We, we couldn't write better scripts if we tried than what the Bank of International Settlements says in full good faith and seriousness. They are absurd. Let us treat them as such. Yeah. I, mean, I do think that we're making mistakes uh, if, if we're working. I, 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 having Bitcoin on a legacy system is almost impossible. But I think one of our ideals is to try and not make it impossible. Is to make it impossible. We don't want Bitcoin where it can be seized. Not your keys. Not your Bitcoin. And every time that we go into a jurisdiction and we want a special program, we want to legislate this. So these are the rules we want. We're violating that, guys. We got to be real careful. I think it, I, I, if I can just advise one thing: study sound money in the past. The only reason we have Bitcoin is because we don't have sound money. If we had sound money, we wouldn't need Bitcoin. Nobody would have invented it. We have it because we don't, and that's the generation you live in. We did have sound money at one time for a very short period of time. Look, guys. This is this is an information war, make no mistake. And all of you guys could contribute. Every like, every tweet you like, every video you like, every video that you view contributes to victory, right? And at the end of the day, Bitcoin will free mankind. So it rests on all shoulders and focus on what you're good at, right? I, I can't write to save my life, so I make YouTube videos, right? They're freaking hilarious. Bitcoin Gandalf is an expert at social media. Phil dismantles shitcoins. It's fucking awesome. By the way, when we talk about shitcoins, that includes fiat currencies because they're the fucking ultimate shitcoin. They're a shitcoin that essentially gets support from the state to make the NPCs believe that somehow that shitcoin is better, but we all know that it's not. Inflation is theft from the lower and middle classes, and it's a redistribution of wealth to the wealthy, the very wealthy, and back to the state. And what do they do with that wealth redistribution? Fucking wars, social programs that none of us agree with. All these crazy con concoctions that comes up in politicians' heads, that's what they do with it. So if you want a better future for your ancestors, for your kids, you must win this war. And every single thing that you think is irrelevant, whether it's watching a video, coming to a conference, liking a tweet, no. It's contributing to the war effort. Every time you take Bitcoin into self-custody, you are part of this revolution, whether you realize it or not. We must defund the fucking beast. Thank you. Guys, that was our time. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you had fun. With you guys have questions. Yeah, hit it. This is the last panel. Questions. Uh, that was expected. Anyways, thanks, guys. <laughs>